Hello and welcome to our discussion uh, on the acid base unit. Some additional concepts that go with uh, the basic ideas of acids and bases and how we classify them. Um, so hopefully you're taking high quality notes as you follow along. Some of the concepts in this part of the unit are a little bit abstract, uh, uh, but we'll hopefully keep them clear as we move through. Um, first thing I want to talk about is uh, amphoteric substances. Um, the first is you, you need to understand that sometimes an, uh, a substance in the bronsted lowry definition can behave both as an acid and as a base. And it looks like these are formatted bad. So an amphoteric substance acts, acts as an acid in some reactions, um, accepting hydrogen ions, and as a base in a different reaction, donating hydrogen ions. Um, and this is a concept we'll look at further in a future video where water itself, to a very small degree, and in any sample of water, ionizes to form hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And this is the crux of what makes an acid, and this is the crux of what makes it a base. But you see they come out on a one-to-one -one ratio, so they, in effect, cancel one another out. Um, but what you should see here is that water can, in some cases, gain a hydrogen ion to become uh, uh, hydronium. That would be water acting like a base, gains a hydrogen ion to become hydronium. In other scenarios, hyd uh, water can donate a hydrogen ion to become hydroxide, which is water behaving like an acid, forming a conjugate base. So, uh, if you remember from the second video, we talked about strong conjugate bases and strong uh, and weak conjugate bases. Uh, this would be weak acid behavior. So, this is very unlikely. This is very, very likely. So, this is where you would have a strong conjugate base, strong conjugate acid, because this is a very uh, low concentration process in the forward reaction. So, um, we also talk about acids in terms of uh, how protic they are. Uh, polyprotic acid means it has more than one hydrogen to give. So we can often define acids by how many hydrogens they can donate. A monoprotic acid has one acid to give. An example of hydrochloric acid, there's only one hydrogen per molecule. A diprotic acid would have two to give, uh, like in carbonic acid. You've got two hydrogen ions per molecule of carbonic acid. And finally, triprotic, three acids, ions, like phosphoric acid. Now, this can go way beyond this in a, in a giant um, uh, organic molecule. But for the purposes of our inorganic acids, this is what we're going to see, monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic. Just as an acid can be termed this way, so can a base. Um, a monobasic base can accept one hydrogen. For example, hydrogen sulfate ion. It's got a negative one charge, which means a hydrogen ion can jump and latch on to make H2SO4. A dibasic base can accept two hydrogen ions, like the carbonate ion. It's got room for two hydrogens. The first would make hydrogen carbonate. The second one would make dihydrogen carbonate. Let's write that so you don't get lost. So when it gains one hydrogen ion, you would form HCO3 minus we add another hydrogen ion to that, you would get H2CO3. So, a tribasic base has three spaces to add hydrogen ions, like the phosphate ion, which can form phosphoric acid H3PO4. So there's room for three hydrogen ions to jump onto this ion. Tribasic ion. Very important key idea we'll visit in several ways um, is the, the notion of strength versus concentration. Strong acids we defined as by name, they are strong acids. We know them to reliably ionize when placed in water. But concentrated is different. Concentration, concentration we've spoken about uh, in terms of solution is relative. Um, a, 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 a high molarity in solutions is comparable. If we have 0.1 molar hydrochloric and hydrobromic acid, they're both strong. They're both the same concentration, so um, they would both they would be very similar substances. 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid compared to 0.1 molar hydrobromic acid, both strong, but hydrobromic is more concentrated. And then 0.1 molar hydrochloric versus 0.1 molar acetic acid, H2C3H3O2, H2C2H3O2. Um, hydrochloric acid is strong, uh, however, acetic acid is weak, but they do have the same concentration. Now, the question you should ask yourself is what's different here? Is this being a weak acid when this is placed in solution compared to this? This would be all ions, hydrogen ions and chloride ions mixed in amongst water, where this would be 99.99% intact hydrogen 
attached to acetate ion, so intact acid, without hydrogen ions in solution, and at least not very much. And finally, we have um, citric acid, H3, C6, H5, O7, um, 0.1 molar versus 0 0.01 phosphoric acid. These are both weak acids, um, but the acetic acid is more concentrated. They're both triprotic, too, would be another way to describe them, H3, C6, H5, O7, and H3, PO4. Both are weak. The, uh, the uh, citric acid, though, this species is more concentrated than this one because it's got a greater molarity. Another key way we can discuss acid and basic salts, or sorry, acids and bases is in terms of acid-based salts. Salts, when you place them in water, we haven't really ever talked about this, can form basic solutions and acidic solutions if we consider what they're going to do when they ionize. Now we're assuming this salt's going to ionize, aluminum chloride. What you need to consider when you look at any salt to decide if that salt's going to produce a basic solution or an acidic solution is what did it come from? Now, when we say an, an acidic salt dropped in water forms an acidic solution, it's a very, very uh, relatively weak acidic solution, but nevertheless, its pH is going to dip below 7. And we'll speak more about pH later. Um, um, but what we consider is where it came from. So let's break down aluminum chloride. Aluminum were it attached to hydroxide would be termed aluminum hydroxide. We should immediately say, hey, that's a weak base. That's a weak base. And chloride, if attached to hydrogen, makes hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid. So that's strong acid, this weak base. Well, so when you place this, this in solution, aluminum is likely to bind hydroxide and leave behind hydro, hydrogen ions. Let's write that out. If we have aluminum ions in solution, they are going to bind onto hydroxide, literally stripping it off of water and form aluminum hydroxide and hydrogen ions. Okay, this is in the presence of water. So this, sorry, this is going to strip the hydroxide out of water and make aluminum hydroxide and leave behind hydrogen ions. And these will lower the pH less than 7, an acidic system. Now this is a very slight process. Notice the pH is going to be between 5 and 7. Nevertheless, slightly acidic. And that's because this weak base is going to bind the hydroxide because it doesn't like to be in ion form, while this will form all ions. And since there's that imbalance there, you're going to experience an acidic system. The opposite is a basic salt. For example, lithium acetate. We know lithium, when bonded to hydroxide, is going to be a strong base. It's going to ionize completely. However, acetate, when bound to hydrogen, forms a weak acid, acetic acid. So this is going to want to be intact. So when you put lithium acetate into water, it's going to ionize into lithium ions and acetate ions. Okay? Water is going to be all around. The lithium will not bind on to the hydroxide to stay. It's going to stay in its ion form because it doesn't want to form that, that complex of lithium hydroxide. However, the acetate will quickly bind on to hydrogen ions and form HC2H3O2. And when you, you essentially are splitting water to do that, this meets water, makes this, and leaves behind hydroxide ions. When you split water, you have to have hydrogen ions and hydroxide. The hydroxide won't bind onto lithium. So we have free hydroxide ions in solution, which makes our salt basic. We can expect the pH to be between 7 and 9, a little bit basic. Neutral salts form when a strong acid and strong base react. So lithium chloride, well, the root base would be lithium bound onto hydroxide. The root acid would be hydrogen bound onto chloride. These are both strong, both ionized completely in solution. And since both ionize completely, assuming all things are equal, our pH should be exactly 7. Because we have exactly the same concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in solution, and we should experience complete neutralization. So let's do some prediction here. Sodium nitrate, sodium bound to hydroxide would be sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base. 
hydrogen bound to nitrate would form nitric acid, a strong acid. So our pH should be about 7. I think we're riding on this one. I don't think we have a space to fill. So the parent acid would be hydrogen bound to nitrate. The parent base would be sodium bound to hydroxide. Iron 2 sulfate. Sorry, iron 3 sulfate. Iron bound to hydroxide, parent acid, sorry, iron bound to hydroxide would be our base. Hydrogen bound to sulfate would be our acid. Strong acid, weak base, 5 to 7 pH. Strong acid. Let's define all these so this is clear. Since we have a strong acid, weak base system, we would expect to have hydrogen ions remaining in solution as we formed iron 3 hydroxide, therefore acidic system. In this one, calcium phosphite, we would form H3PO3, phosphorus acid, and our parent base would be calcium hydroxide. And since we have a strong base, and a weak acid, we expect to form hydroxide ions as our Phosphorus acid would form in solution, leaving behind calcium ions and hydroxide ions. But hydroxide ions free would low, would increase your pH to somewhere between 7 and 9. So, acidic and basic salts. We'll talk about it in class. That's all for this uh, furthering of our definitions of acids and bases. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Please make sure you've taken high-quality notes. And uh, be prepared to come into class to ask questions and clarify any uh, pieces of this that gave you pause. Um, please make sure you check out falconkim.weebly.com to, to address any direct issues you've got right now. Otherwise, we'll see you in class.